Testing, testing, oh, there's my chin. Welcome back to Ash Hardell's channel. <laughs> I'm back, back, back. Back again. So this is editing app. I, I show up sometimes, not tons, but every once in a while. First off, I want to say thank you to the new 80,000 people to the channel. Say what? And this is the first chance I've had to say thank you on camera. That's a lot of responsibility. Thank you from the bottom of my heart. I do have one of those. Thank you for subscribing to this channel. Thank you for watching this channel. Whether you're an old subscriber, hey guys. Whether you're a new subscriber, hey what's up you guys. You wanted more episodes exposing other sites, so we're gonna do that in some shopping hauls. Almost as exposed as my lower half at the moment because you don't have to wear pants to make YouTube videos. Fair warning that this topic, while we do make it fun and while we do have a lot of fun and we have some laughs during this episode, it can be a little triggering for some people. So. Next week will be fun. Today we're gonna have some us time where we learn about each other and we talk about problems that exist within our community. Yay! So I hope that you enjoyed today's episode with my good friend Sandy. He's a lovely human and one son of a beach. I'll go home now. Uh, roll the opening. Hello! Hello! Welcome back to What's a Safe Word. I'm Amp. And I'm Sandy. And today we're gonna we're gonna have a conversation. We're gonna talk about some stuff. Lots of talking. So Sandy <laughs> <laughs> with our hands. Are we talking about fisting? No, it's more like like uh crabs. Talk about crabs. Like whoop, 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 oh, whoop, STDs? Whoop, whoop, whoop. No, we've we've got a few episodes okay, on that already. They didn't do so well. Okay. It bugged people a little bit. <laughs> What do you do, Sandy? Why are you here? <laughs> in life? How did you get in here? What? <laughs> so basically my title, which is kind of a little bit wanky, is the brand director for Recon. Basically Re Recon is like a kinky dating app. So if you want to yeah. find people that are into leather, rubber, fisting, bondage, a whole assortment of things. Emphasis on whole. <laughs> Talking about fisting? But you work very closely with Recon. You are you yeah. are pretty much a face of Recon. Yeah, I do a lot of the like videos and presenting. Hi, I'm Matt Sandy from Recon and welcome to Fetish Week 2018. And I host a lot of the parties and we produce the content. We go out and kind of put the word out about Recon and try and make it seem like a, a place that people want to be a part of and make it really exciting yeah. and accessible to everyone. That's the main thing for me. Like, I always feel like Fetish has this thing about it being like this dark and dank secret, whereas I really wanted to make it feel accessible and celebratory as well, like something to to be proud of, really. So you guys, I mean, you fight the good fight in many ways. Well, you fight with YouTube specifically. <laughs> so like recently, we, we went back and forth with YouTube because your yeah. channel got deleted, not for the first time, but for the second time. Yeah. It is. For... <laughs> who, who knows what for? And today we want to talk about acceptance a little bit because I think what you guys fought with on YouTube a lot was just you were making content that was not acceptable yeah. to their guidelines, which we were still strictly following. Yeah. But I think that that goes much further than just that problem with YouTube. Like we fought YouTube, we fought back, we tweeted about it, it got lots of traction, but the only time that anything happened was when there was actual like news outlets that were like, Oh, hey, what's uh, YouTube? What do you do? Hey, mm. Magically, the day or two after a bunch of people tweeted <laughs> yeah, exactly. really upset, magically. Then it was like, oh, we've got some pressure here. Ironically, it it's unacceptable. <laughs> <laughs> it's literally people in gear talking about their stories, and that's it. Like, I really and didn't understand. There is actual porn on YouTube. Like, there is <gasps> pornographic oh my, oh my god, don't get don't me get started. Me started. <laughs> Double standard much? Double standard, and I'm, and I'm not here for that. And so that's kind of like the main topic is acceptance. Yes. Like in, in our community, whether it's kink, gay, LGBT, whatever, like recently, I don't know if you've seen it, but like there's been lots of pushback to like asexuals, bisexuals, yeah. like gays that aren't gay enough, kinksters that are into the wrong thing. Like acceptance comes from, the call's coming from inside the house. <laughs> yeah. Like so much of this hate comes from the community at large, and I really, really wish that it was not such a big issue, but like, it's something that we don't talk about enough. Yeah. And so when you said that you were in town, I was like, Hey, do you wanna have like a really serious talk? That's probably not gonna be super funny, but like, <laughs> is really important. <laughs> Buckle up, people. Sorry, yeah, let's go into these questions. Dive. Dive. You ready, you ready? 
That was me swimming. Oh. Because I don't know what swimming looks like. <laughs> Today's episode's a little serious. Yes. It's fun, it's funny, it's important, mm -hmm. I think. Yeah, completely. But it's a topic that we get asked about all the time, which is talking about race within the kink and fetish and LGBT community. Because yeah. it is something that gets kind of pushed to the side. It's mm -hmm. something that people don't want to talk about. What makes you different should be celebrated. And yeah. I find that in our community, far too often, the differences are what we're afraid of and yeah. what we make different and what we make other. Yeah. Do, do, do you know what? It's been, more recently, it's been one of the topics that I really want to talk about. And I've been kind of using Recon as a vehicle to talk a little bit about it. Mm -hmm. um, just because I think that I've got to a point of my own acceptance. And that's, I know. That takes, that takes a long time. Yeah. That takes a long time. It's really important for you, for you, first of all, for you to know yourself and to accept yourself for your foibles, your insecurities, the good things, the bad things, whatever the case may be. And then you can kind of like pass that on to other people. We go through this period of time where we can't accept ourselves. We're not allowed to accept mm -hmm. ourselves. We're told that this isn't good and you shouldn't be like this. And you're trying to tr fight against it. You know? Yeah, and there's a lot of baggage. Like, I've already got two bags here. I don't need more. <laughs> I don't need more baggage. Like, <laughs> it's serious. They, no, they're not. They're, they're not. The lights help a lot. Okay, yeah. fine. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> like, I'm 31 now, and I've gone through a lot of different stuff. I mean, I'm not every, not every day. I'm like, yes, but there are definitely there are definitely. I don't know. I see. I see your Instagram stories. I'm the fetish Oprah. Well, first of all, therapy is a good thing. Secondly, it's like surrounding yourself with good people. Thirdly, I think it's just knowing within yourself what you, what, what you bring and contribute to the world. That sounds so like... No. Sorry. I mean, it, it sounds like Oprah, but you are Oprah. You are, you are the fetish Oprah. <laughs> uh, do you know the amount of people that have sent me that? Like, hi. <laughs> I'm the fetish Oprah, that little, but anyway, that's... Okay, do you know what, I, I'll tell you one thing. When I've worked for Recon for five years, and when I first started, I felt this immense pressure to be the fetish man. I had this view of fetish as being, you know, the Tom of Finland fetish man. And I was like, I'm not that person. Like, I no can't... one's that person. <laughs> there are people that are like that, but I just knew that that wasn't my demeanor. Mm -hmm. So I struggled to kind of figure out who am I, what do I do, and how do I represent this brand in a way that is, you know, acceptable. And I struggled with it for a long time. I went through a lot of different phases with like my fetish approach and my gear and how I even acted at our events. I'm really silly. I have this like stupid bubbly personality. I may swish around and do things. <laughs> I do like a swish. Does that make me any less fetishy than someone else or any less kinky than someone else? No. No. But then I kind of found my own first fetish personality and then I put that out there. And then I started to accept myself and be like, actually, this is who I am and everyone should be comfortable with it. And do you know what? As soon as I did that, everyone was just like, I fucking love the fact that you're doing your thing and it's amazing. You are you. Yeah, and I feel comfortable and I can present that to everyone. You're lovely, you're wonderful. You look like Linda Evangelist. Did you stone those tight? Oh, you're smiling. Can someone just, <laughs> someone just take a picture and be like, you're doing amazing, sweetie. <laughs> you're doing amazing, sweetie. <laughs> I hear you. <laughs> I feel you. And you know what? It took me a while, even as a black man on the fetish scene, to talk about race and diversity. So yeah, I mean, look, from my point of view, there isn't a lot of diversity in the fetish scene. It's not the most diverse scene. There are things that we can all do to change that, mm -hmm. but it's, it's a problem on both sides. So where do you want me to start? So the first question I want to go into is kind of touching base on your background in learning to accept yourself mm -hmm. is like when there is no representation or there's no visibility for someone who is like you, yeah. like how does that affect you coming into the, the fetish and kink community. My experience is a bit different because I was kind of thrust into this world as opposed to choosing to be a part of it. But it's something that obviously I've grown to love and I, you know, I can't imagine my life being without kink and fetish. And I think that there was always this curiosity within it. Now, when I first started, 
In all honesty, I didn't notice the lack of diversity. It was only really when I started then going out into the scene a bit more in my own time that I was like, oh, there's not many people that look like me. It's a weird experience because you either get fetishized for being a black man and there's this already this stereotype or these thoughts about what you're going to be. And that's where it gets kind of... It's tricky because the second that you fetishize someone or something about someone is when you kind of dehumanize them. I mean, look, I've been through... I've, I've had crazy messages on recon before. Oh, God. <laughs> what I would say is that Whoever it is, whatever turns you on, be respectful of that person, you know, and don't just automatically think that we're all the same. Like, in the same way, I would never look at, you know, you and Mr. Christopher and be like, they're the same people because they're both white. Mm. And so how has that, like, representation or being a representative for Recon affected you, do you think? It's, it's funny because now my fetish life inside is a lot more present on like my social media. It wasn't necessarily a conscious decision because, okay, it started off with me being physically present. Not mentally, just physically. <laughs> Not mentally, <laughs> just a shell. <laughs> oh. No. I wanted to see more black men in gear, fetish, kinky. I've always been very conscious about putting men of color in our advertising, for example, because we had a party once in San Francisco a couple of years ago, I think it was 2015. Okay. Um, and we had this beautiful Japanese model called Yoshi Kawasaki, I think his name is. Okay. There was a lot of people that were like, oh, are you sure you should put this person in your ad? Because he's not really the atypical big hairy muscle fetish man. Ugh, like really masculine, whatever that means. Masculine, whatever that means. Well, when you say it like that, it doesn't mean that. <laughs> Our party was really well attended. There was this man who came over. He was, I, I know he was Chinese and he said, can I come into your party? And I said, Wait, why did he ask if he could come into the party? I'll tell you, it come. I'll, oh, the story, oh, sorry, there's, sorry. A, there's a whole Continue. thing. Continue. So he comes over and he says, can I come to, to your party? And the only prerequisite of any of the recon parties is you have to be wearing gear. So he said to me, yeah, I'm wearing like, and he showed me his jock and his harness. And I was like, yeah, that's completely fine. You can come in. He said to me, give me five minutes. I'm not joking. 30 minutes later, like a convoy of his friends came to the door oh. and they were waiting for permission for someone to let them in because they didn't feel like they could come to the party. And it was only because we put Yoshi in that ad. If you don't see yourself and stuff, you don't think that you belong. And I think that's part of the good thing about me putting myself out there a little bit more because now people think they can be a part of Recon, they can be part of the fetish scene, they can do whatever it is that they want to do and explore their fetish side. And recently for the Recon zine, Recon issue one, um, I interviewed the men of Onyx. Wait, wait, but explain what Onyx is. Because, I mean, people at home are probably like, Onyx, but Pokemon? Pokemon? They're like, no. <laughs> and we don't want to take them for granted. <laughs> no. Granted. Granted. Oh, I But I want to make sure that we have rock solid information. So what is <laughs> Onyx? I'm sorry, these are puns, but I, I have nothing but respect for the Onyx boys. So Onyx are an organization that are run and made for uh, men of color who want to understand their kinks and their fetishes. And they teach, you know, how to conduct um, kink in a safe way. So that was one of the things why I wanted to talk to them because meeting with them and kind of getting their viewpoints about what they think about diversity and why these, why their group is so important. Whenever I work an event, like the Onyx boys, they come around and they're in a group. Yeah. And there's a big group of them. Yeah. And they're just so giggly and fun, like yeah. they're having a good time. They want to get shocked and zapped yeah. and like, they just want to experience all these things. Yeah. And they want to do it together yeah. because it's a bonding experience. There is something about feeling connected with people that look like you. Because like your fetish, the way you experience fetish is very different from how I experience it. Mm -hmm. Like there's certain parts or certain fetishes where like the way I would experience it or enjoy it is very different from you. Yeah. Or the way I would play. Like for instance, impact play, if you slap me, I like, I turn purple. Yes. And this is one of the things that the Onyx guys said. How are you supposed to know the difference between when you get impact play or when you get slapped or 
when you get flogged versus when I get flogged, like there's going to be a difference. You're going to turn purple. Mine's not going to be like that. You have to feel the heat. And that was the thing that he said. And I just went, that, 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 oh. And that's why those kinds of organizations and those brotherhoods are really yeah. important. Yeah. And why more things like Onyx need to exist. Completely. I think also just overall, just being visible, that group, being, seeing a group of, you know, people of color is so important. I hope that they like the article that I wrote for them. But, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, I'm like, gonna cry. <laughs> oh. No, just because it was really personal to me and it was really difficult. It's really difficult to have these conversations about race and diversity. And, and for it not to come across like preachy, I just want to have the conversation so that it opens people's eyes, it opens people's thoughts, it opens people's ears to actually accept. It opens people's holes. I mean, sometimes. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> talking about fisting? For some people, that's not enough. You need two hands. I don't. I mean, I don't. I, I don't know how people. I have to really know you. I have to see three months worth of bank statements before you can go up there. Because one month you can get away with, you might have like birthday money, but I think it's time to close this episode. <laughs> <laughs> I think part of it as well is showing the diversity of the scene, not making it seem like this dirty, dank secret. Like fetish is something to be celebrated. And fetishes are all, everyone's fetish is different. And everyone's fetishes count and matter. That's the other thing. Like I want everyone to feel like they can do, do you. If you want to sit on a cake, do it. If you want to lick some toes, absolutely. Yeah. If you want to... If you want to... In this... Just... Then you can do that too. Consensually. Consent is sexy, people. So what... What do you want to close with? What is the last thing that you want to say to the people? Like, what is your takeaway from this? What do I want... No, <laughs> it's always like... It's like... <laughs> I want people to feel like they can reach out to whoever. You can reach out to me if you want. Um, I am at that underscore Sandy, as in like, who? Oh, that, that Sandy. Sandy. Yeah. Um, <laughs> feel free to explore and do your thing. And just be more accepting. Yeah. You know what? I grew up as a kid. I was bullied. It's not cute when adults do that very same thing that happened to you as a child to other adults. Like, yeah. don't be that bully. Be accepting. And whether you're playing in the bedroom, out of the bedroom, always have a safe word. Today's safe word is... Diversity. <laughs> <laughs> you weren't ready, I'm sorry. I was, I was not like, ready. Was, how's, how's that for a segue? <laughs> Can you imagine being like, <laughs> diversity? That would be awful. Hey. Thank you for coming on today. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. But now... I must, must go. go. I've got other things to do. Get out! So if you enjoyed today's episode, definitely go check out Sandy and Recon on their channel. Go check out the new Recon zine. There might be some familiar faces in that. Leave a comment down below if you enjoyed this conversation. Subscribe. Ring the bell. There's, uh, you, you know how to do it. You've seen a few episodes of this. <laughs> and we'll see you guys next time on What's the Safe Word. Bye! Bye. I don't know. I prefer the fetish Oprah because I feel like Oprah is like taken seriously. <laughs> um, because you want to be taken seriously. <laughs> I feel like I no. Is that not? Am I not taken seriously? Next question. <laughs> <laughs>